Elmore Leonard has been called the best American writer of crime fiction alive. He began his career 40 years ago writing Western fiction. In the late 1960s, he switched to contemporary crime novels. Today, after 12 bestsellers in his many years, his prolific career in pulp fiction continues in Hollywood. The upcoming screen adaptation of Leonard's Get Shorty will star John Travolta, Gene Hackman, and Rene Russo. Four other Leonard books have been optioned by director Quentin Tarantino. His latest book is Riding the Rap, and I am very pleased to have him back at this desk. Welcome. Charlie? It's great to have you here. We, uh, tell me this story. We were just referring to a review of your book, Riding the Rap, by, uh, by Martin Amos, who was on this show recently. Yeah. This is pure yeah. hype for you. He says, I first read Riding the Rap in mid-January. In mid-March, I read it again. The reviewer curling up with the present participle. Rereading Elmer Leonard in the morning and saying it was work. The experience, like the book, was wicked and irresistible. This was postmodern dec post decadence. This was bliss. It doesn't get any better than that, is it? No, it doesn't. No, no. <laughs> uh, no, there was a, a friend of mine who said that I, he thought I should tell people that Martin Amos is really my son. <laughs> this was Mike Lupica. <laughs> Mike Lupica, yes, of Newsday. He's an old friend. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're a big basketball fan, aren't you? Sure. Yeah, what do you think of the game between the Knicks and the Pacers? Huh? I mean, Patrick Ewing having that moment there. I mean, as someone said every great basketball fan wanted Patrick Ewing to score, even if you were for the Pacers. I know. Except that you yeah. were. Yeah, Larry Brown said that he's sorry that he's glad he missed, but he was sorry that it was Patrick who did it. That Patrick who did it. But I'm a Pistons fan, so I really, really don't care don't what care. happened to the Knicks. <laughs> All no. you're saying is bring on Doug Collins and let's have more Grant Hills. That's right. Sure. <laughs> right. But you're a huge basketball fan. Will you follow? Well, I'm not that big of a fan. I'm yeah. following now. I'm following, yeah. the sure, the playoffs, right? Yeah. yeah. I think the um, Magic will take the whole thing myself. I think they will too. I think. Oh my God, Akeem, Elmore Leonard again. I really do. I think uh, Akeem is too big. It's just bigger than everybody. Yeah. yeah, and I see now that no, you're talking uh, about you think Shaq is bigger than everybody. Shaq, yeah, Shaq is bigger than everybody. And I see Magic is probably going to come yeah, back. That's huh? amazing. Is Thirty-eight, there... seven or eight years old, yeah. something like that. When did you first know Quentin Tarantino? I haven't met him. You've never. I've never. Met him. I've you're never, a biggest fan. No. You've never met. He's optioned your books. Yes. No, he just borrows my uh, techniques. Yeah, that's all. Does. No, we haven't met. My my according to my agent about. Two years ago, right after Reservoir Dogs came out, and when Quentin was still in Hollywood, well, he's there now, um, he went to see my agent to option Rum Punch because there were three characters in the book who were in the same book 13 years earlier, a book that he stole from a bookstore and was caught. <clears throat> and then his parents grounded him, and he couldn't go yeah. out for, what, two weeks or so. And then when he was released, he bought the book. And he wanted to do Rum Punch, because he, he liked these characters so much. Uh, but we couldn't get together, because he, the, he couldn't get to it for two years or more. He had so much to do, and, and he wasn't really set up to uh, make any deals at that time. But then it was a little while later, a year, say a year and a half later, a few months ago, that my agent approached him with the idea of, why don't you do four of them? And uh, he read them, and he, he w has mm -hmm. said he wants to do Kill Shot, direct and write, and produce the others. Yeah. Now, Alan Rudolph has uh, written a script for one of the others, and it, it might or might not yeah. be produced. But you're not happy with what's happened to those that have already been done? No. No, I'm not happy because I don't think they were uh, good movies. Yeah. Not because they didn't... Uh, stay with the book. I mean, th that's not a concern of mine. I know they're, th that they're... It's, it's a different it has to. Yeah, it's got to be adapted to the screen. A lot of things have to change. But I would like to see a good movie made. That's the main thing. Yeah, and the Burt Reynolds tried one. What was it he did? Stick. Stick. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was clearly... Yeah, that didn't but work at didn't all. <laughs> no, <laughs> it didn't work. We like to say it didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah. That's a nice way of saying it. It just didn't work. You know? Yeah. All right, take a look at this. This is, from my show, a program which you saw this particular episode, Quentin Tarantino talking about you. Here it is. Roll tape. Why do you work in the crime genre? Well, it's a genre I've always really got a kick at. Yeah. You know, from the 30s and the 40s and Raymond Chandler and yeah, Dashiell and, Hammond and, and all like, that. And stuff in the 70s yeah. and just all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I've always, I've always, it's a Elmore genre. Elmore Leonard or? Oh, I love Elmore Leonard. Yeah. In fact, to me, True Romance is basically like an Elmore Leonard <laughs> movie that yeah. he didn't write, you know. Um, uh, and like, actually, I actually owe 
a big debt to like kind of figuring out my style from Elmore Leonard because you know he was the first writer I'd ever read, and but also that Charles Williford did it as well. But he was one of the first writers I'd ever read that just let mundane conversations yeah. actually inform the characters, you know. And then all of a sudden, boom, you know, you're you know you're into whatever story you're telling. But the thing is, though. Um, it's just a genre I've always really liked and always had a lot of appreciation for and liked going to and I thought I would do a good job with it. There it is. Uh, and he's right about it, though, isn't it? I mean, it, you let mundane <clears throat> conversation inform the character. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what mundane means, but it's It's, the, it's, it's whatever, normal. whatever commonplace things yeah. that we all talk about, why wouldn't uh, the bad guys be talking that way, too? You know, because I, I, I think of them that way. I think of the of the uh, the guy who's going to rob a bank getting up in the morning and he's wondering what am I going to wear you know to rob this bank should I wear my because they've got cameras now and I want to yeah. look good should I wear my Reeboks or I don't know should, a hat what kind of a hat and this is serious yeah. and you've got to treat it seriously even though um, Get Shorty is, is, is listed in, in the trades as a comedy yeah. well they, they've got to call it something Right. But uh, for years, uh, producers, network, not ne network, uh, studio uh, people would call my agent and say, and they'd read a manuscript, and they'd say, well, is this stra drama, straight drama, or comedy? And he says, well, it, it's what it's it is. Both. It's everything. It's what it is, yeah. yeah. But the idea is, when you shoot it, my feeling is, shoot it straight. Shoot it straight. Let the audience react, not the other actors. Are you optimistic about Get Shorty? You Very. Got Travolta's in it. Yeah. Danny DeVito's in it. Right. Uh, who's directing? Gene, Gene Hackman. Gene Hackman and Rene Russo. Barry that? Sonnenfeld, right. who uh, was an ace uh, director of photography for the Coen Brothers, right. Miller's Crossing right. and right. Racing Arizona. And uh, uh, two years ago, we, 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 we talked about the sound of the picture. The, the sound. sound. The sound of the dialogue. The sound yeah. of the fact that we keep it straight and flat and let the audience react and not not the actors that I've always been uh, my objection to what's been made of my stuff you see the actors acting you know and I don't think you should see actors acting. that's what you said about stick and I approach uh, writing the same way uh, at least the way I uh, get into a novel my, my I mean I try and keep myself out of the novel I try and keep my words out of the novel because I don't want it, I don't want the reader to see me writing, mm -hmm. to see me using writer words. You know, it's the same thing on the screen. Yeah, I try. I try to do this here. You know, mm -hmm. make it look natural, Conversation. conversational. Yeah, rather than looking yeah. as if it's sort of scripted or or people are posturing. Yes, right. Uh, writing the rap. Interesting idea. Where did the idea of sort of having a character <laughs> be influenced by Beirut come from? Um, I don't know, because when I'm asked that, I never remember where ideas <laughs> come from. But it seemed to me a good idea that someone who was watching the experience, the hostage experience in Beirut on the news, and some of those hostages, of course, were there for years, yeah. blindfolded, chained. I can see someone who's looking for a hustle, who's looking for a fast buck, thinking, could there be money in that? <laughs> could we take hostages here yeah. and uh, hold them? Don't tell anybody, because if you tell anybody and say, we want so much money for this guy, then it's kidnapping, it's ransom. Yeah. Hold them, uh, let the guy stew a while ba with his eyes uh, bandaged. In, and uh, put him in, in a damp basement up. where there are all kinds of gremlins running around. Yeah. Except that, as as one of the of the uh, accomplices says, where are you going to find a basement in Florida? <laughs> Miami? <laughs> <laughs> so so they end up in his sister's place on the his <laughs> mother, oh, his mother his mother's, mother's place, place on the beach, <laughs> Carpet, carpeting, <laughs> eating, <laughs> eating fat, Pe uh, peanut brittle and jello <laughs> and whatnot. This is hardly a hard time, is it? But it's it's still it's not comic. It's serious business, see. I mean, they're, they're so serious. Taking people hostage is serious business. Yes, yes, it is. But the people who do it are ordinary people. Yeah, who are looking for, you know, a fast buck, a hustle. Yeah. They, uh, I'm, uh, I like that kind of a character who 
he, 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 he doesn't want to work. He doesn't want to be work for anyone. He doesn't want to be told what to do, and yet he risks being told what to do every minute of the day in uh, prison. Because eventually these dumb guys are going to get caught if, they, if they're not dead and go to prison. Because that's what happens to criminals. They go to prison. You know? Where they tell you what to do. Yeah. You know, and control your life. Yeah. yeah. Um, you began in Westerns, though. Mm hmm Why did you leave Westerns for this? The, the market culture. dried up. The, the market... <laughs> you went Louis L'Amour and that was it? or No, it was just Louis. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Louis won. took over all the shelves <laughs> in all the stores. Yeah, he had all the display space. Yeah. They, Bantam really sold him. But the, in, by the end of the 50s, the westerns were drying up. All the yeah. pulps were gone by yeah. then. Even Saturday Evening Post and Collier's were almost out. And they, were, they were buying westerns. The western movies were, were thinning out because they were all on television. More than 30 on prime time by 1959. And uh, I didn't like really any of them. Although I, I liked some of them a little mm -hmm. bit, but they weren't. Uh, I, none of them had any real authenticity to them, the way I, uh, the way I saw it. Though it was time to move on to another mm -hmm. genre, because I had I had picked westerns anyway as a good place to learn how to write, yeah. because of the market and because I like westerns. How would you learn how to write with westerns? Oh, you mean well, you just I'd needed to have a market? Here's market. here are. Um, 15 magazines I can aim at. If you write a short story today, what do you aim at? Uh, Playboy, Esquire, New Yorker. Uh, Harper's the, Atlantic, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, and, and the quarterlies that, that pay you a subscription or something like yeah, that. Right. You know. uh, and I was always motivated commercially that how do you make money? If I'm going to do this, how do you make money at it? I thank God that he, he didn't make me a, that he made me a prose writer and not a poet. Because there's not much there's, money in poetry. There's, there's a chance to get ahead in this, in this game, you know. Um, when did you know you had it? I mean, I mean, is it selling something that convinces you when you get your check that I can do this for a living? Or is it, or is it when you look and read a passage and you say, my God, I can write? Well, in 1985, a, a journalist asked, what's it like success, uh, what's it like to have success come at your age? And I thought, what, what, what did he think I'd been doing all this time? I'd, I'd sold everything I'd written to the movies. I'd sold everything I wrote. I, sold, I, I was doing OK. Yeah. But I hadn't made uh, the bestseller list yet. So the hook there was uh, overnight success after 30 years. You know? <laughs> and um, and I, was, I was thankful. And it was about then that I decided, well, yeah, this is what I do. I write books. I don't have to worry about going back to the ad agencies. Right. They used to have recurring dreams yeah. of you my... You worked at Campbell Ewald, which was, is that right? Yeah, on yeah, Chevrolet. The, yeah, they did all the big Chevrolet stuff. The big, it's a big Detroit agency. Um, and maybe headquartered somewhere else, but I remember to identify yeah, it, with it Detroit. It was Detroit, yeah. yeah. Uh, is it possible that you might change to some other... I mean, does, is there something rattling around in the back of your head that says, I'd like to try? this. I got this down. I do one of these a year, and everybody loves them. But what I really want to do is... No. Mm -mm. I think I'll always have a gun in my book <laughs> so that if, you know, if things start to lag a little bit, somebody can pick it up. And I can get something going. <laughs> turn, get them turning those pages, right? Yeah. Who is Christine? My wife. Oh, Christine. your wife. All right. mm -hmm. I always love to read the first sentence. Ocala police picked up Dale Crowey, Jr., for weaving, two o'clock in the morning, crossing the center line and having a busted tail light. Then, while Dale was blowing a .19, they put his name and date of birth into the National Crime Computer and learned he was a fugitive felon wanted on a three-year-old charge of unlawful flight to avoid incarceration. A few days later, an interesting law enforcement character in this book, Redden Gibbons with the Marshal Service came up from Palm Beach County to take Dale back, and the Ocala police wondered about Raylan. This is from Elmore Leonard's latest book, Riding the Rap. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. As Charlie. always, you're welcome anytime. I enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Quentin Tarantino's favorite novelist and many other people, inc certainly including Martin Amos, uh, Elmore Leonard, Riding the Rap. We thank you for joining us this evening. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. See you then.